Hey YouTube, it's been a while since we've uploaded a video, so I thought I'd make a quick how-to guide on building an Intel-based system for 2019. I will be following the Verge's video on building gaming PCs, and I'll briefly mention the parts I'm using for this build as I go along, as well as the relative prices for each component. This build should be relatively easy to replicate. With that said, let's get started. Here are the tools we're going to need. A Phillips head screwdriver, preferably with a magnetic tip, and a cheap set can be found or purchased for less than $10 from your local hardware store. Cutting pliers or a pair of scissors. It's not required if you're following this video, but you'll need it to cut the ends of zip ties used for cable management later. I prefer to start with preparing the motherboard, so you'll need the CPU, motherboard, RAM sticks, and the CPU cooler. First, push down and over on the retention lever of the CPU socket, then lift up to reveal the socket and pins. Take your Intel CPU and look for the gold triangle on one of the corners and line it up with the marked corner on your board. It's usually the bottom left corner. Grab the CPU on its sides, gently place it down in the socket, making sure not to damage any pins. Take the retention lever and hook the bracket onto the front mounted screw and push down and over to secure the CPU in the socket. Next, take your memory modules and take note of where the notch is on the dim. That notch is offset from the center, so it only goes in one way. Determine which DIMM slots need to be occupied for dual channel mode. The motherboard manual will usually tell you, and sometimes it will be printed on the board. My board only has two DIMM slots, and I only have one stick of 8GB DDR4, so I'll only be using one slot. Push the clips back on the DIMM slots, line up the notches. Then push down on both ends until the clips pop back into place. This step will vary from person to person. I purchased my processor secondhand and it didn't come with the stock Intel cooler, so I bought a cheap cooler from Micro Center. Mine installs in a similar fashion to a lot of aftermarket coolers with retention brackets. Take the bracket, line up the holes with these four points surrounding the socket. Then apply a pea-sized amount of thermal paste onto your CPU and install the cooler on top. Tighten each corner a little bit at a time to allow the paste to cover evenly on the CPU. We're done with this part for now, so let's set it aside. Now it's time for the case. Let's grab our case and get it ready for our motherboard mounted components. Take our bag of screws and set those aside. All new cases come with the necessary screws for everything you'll need. Depending on the layout of the case, the power supply may be mounted fan side up or down. I will be installing mine fan side down so it takes in fresh cool air from the bottom of the case and exhausts it out the rear of the case. Now power supplies also come with screws needed for installation in the event that your case did not come with any. Four screws on the back completes the install. At this point, I pre-route the 4 plus 4 EPS cable up to the top corner where my case has a cutout for it. Next up is the motherboard backplate or the rear I.O. shield. Just make sure it's right side up and push on each corner. Some cases have pre-installed motherboard standoffs and others don't. Check your case manual for which type of screw you need to install your board. To add, some cases have a middle peg to help aligning the board with the case easier. If installed correctly, it is safe to handle your motherboard by the CPU cooler. Slide it in place, making sure the rear panel ports line up with the I.O. shield. My board is a micro ATX board, so it will not use all the mounting points. Don't over tighten the screws, snug is plenty. Before installing your graphics card, take this opportunity to plug in the various connectors necessary. The 4 plus 4 APS power, the 24 pin motherboard power, HD audio, front USB, and front panel connectors. Consult your board manual for the front panel layout. It may also be printed on the board nearby, and don't forget the case fans. Remove the corresponding slot covers from the top X16 slot. Make sure that the X16 slot has its retention mechanism out of the way beforehand. Then take your card, line up the PCIe connector to the X16 PCIe slot and push down. Use the same screws from the slot covers. If your case has breakaway slot covers, use the coarse threaded screws that came with your case. It should be the same screws as the power supply. Don't forget to connect the VGA power cables if your card needs supplemental power. This step will vary as well. As a blanket statement, hard drives use the coarse threaded screws while solid state drives use the fine threaded screws. If you have a case that has toolless installation, then this step will be even easier. 
Just plug in a SATA cable from your motherboard to your drives along with the SATA power cable from your power supply and you're good to go. On newer boards, all of the SATA ports are SATA 3, so it usually doesn't matter which ports are used as you can always change the boot order in the motherboard BIOS when installing more than one storage drive. Here's a few tips for cable management. Utilize the cable tie points on the back side of the case and the strategically placed cutouts to route various cables neatly. You can use the thicker 24 pin cable as an anchor for your other thinner cables for cleaner cable runs. Zip ties are nice, but I personally use Velcro straps. Some cases are easier to work in than others. So, I followed their guide up to the part where it stopped making sense. By this point, your computer should be ready to install an operating system. I hope you find some use in this video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.